Ladies and gentlemen, delight to welcome Roddy Beelan. <laughs> that was a that was a pretty. Do you know what? With all the years and all, that was a pretty lame song, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, we do laugh about it. But there was um, there was usually a few bulls thrown in after that by the cop now and again as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's yeah, not on so. the team sheet again, is he? Go on, tell tell us that one. Go, I know you told. Tell the one about when you the, your story about the guy in the Kenlin Road that used to boo you. Oh, all the time. Um, we were setting up, and I'm left side midfield. Fellas right beside me, and he starts screaming at me to get in the game wheel. And you swear words everywhere, and he's screaming at me, "Get in the game wheel and get in the game wheel." And I turned around, and Terry McDermott and Graham Souness were both on their knees laughing. We hadn't kicked off. The game hadn't <laughs> started. And he just screamed at me to get, get in the game wheel. And we weren't even playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've just, I've just Googled. Um, as if, oh, first of all, I've got to say, right, it, it's looking, it, it, the, the, this is, we've done all this, Liverpool obviously tops. We usually have an England World Cup picture here. <laughs> and I literally turned around and went, oh, that's not, that is not going to go down well with the big fan there. So I just run round and found a picture of Messi. I'd like to see, I'd like to see them win it for him. Would you? Yeah, one of the greatest players of a generation. Magnificent to watch. Um, never, was never fired up, never got above his station or didn't seem to when I, I was watching him. Uh, so much skill, so many great goals he scored. I'd like them to do it just so he can say one of the best players ever has held a couple. Do you, do you know? I know this is, and it shows the level I played at football, which was no level at all. But it, it always, you know, we're chatting to people in, you know, pros and what have you. Was there never, a, never a, a, a manager that went to said, you know, look, in the first two minutes, go and absolutely boot him. <laughs> you probably wouldn't get sent off. You probably get a yellow card. I mean, see, I, I know it's a it's a terrible thing to say. And then uh, people have said he was too good. You mm. couldn't. But do you know what I mean? Just think. That's right. Yeah, but I like see you see clips of George Best. You see clips of Messi, and there are people trying to kill them. They're trying to they're trying to maim them. They're trying to get through. Chopper Harris did it with George Best, and we've all seen that many times all those years ago. Best stood up, walked away from it, dribbled around the goalkeeper, scored a goal. Messi does the same thing. You know that we, we can't just say that people weren't allowed to kick him. People did try to kick him, but he skipped away from you so quick. Um, just on that subject, on a different tangent, well, same tangent, really. Who was the best you came up against either domestically or in Europe or internationally? Was the one you thought, oof, gee, he's a bit tasty. You know, one I'd always go back to is Brian Robson. Magnificent player, put his foot in Peter Reid as well. Yeah, and these are players you know you're going to have a hard day with, and it's going to get pretty feisty. There's going to be kicking, there's going to be booting. Um, someone's going to get hurt, but they'd stand and have a pint with you after the game. You could talk and laugh about it. What about you trying to kick me there? I caught Reedy at Wembley one year in a cup final, and he started screaming and shouting at me. But I'd read in the paper. In his column, I think it was, in the Liverpool Echo, that he was struggling with an ankle injury or a calf injury or something. So I decided I would have a look to see how bad it was. And when he was shouting and screaming at me, I just said, you shouldn't have told me in the papers what, what's wrong with you. And he went, OK, point taken. <laughs> well, that's the way it was. Brilliant. Um, we, if there's a noise in the background or there's, there's kerfuffles in the Whelan household, it's because... You're packing, aren't you? you? It's last minute, last minute yeah. dot com packing for Qatar. You're you're yeah. off in the morning. Um, we we we'll we talk about that. But um, World Cups for you must have been a pinnacle of a career. But essentially, would it would it be fair to say disappointing you? Only you only figured in two games out of two World Cups. Yeah, it's um the the nineteen eighty Italian ninety sorry was the one that really really got me down. Um, I'd been captain all the way through. I would have been captain going into Italia 90. But I broke my leg. I broke a bone in my foot playing against Arsenal, a hybrid. And I was getting ultrasound on my foot all the time. And I, and I was still limping about two weeks later. And the World Cup was getting close. So um, they decided to send me in for a bone scan eventually, Liverpool. All the great medical stuff they had back then. They leave you for six weeks and then send you for a bone scan. It turned out that I had broken a bone in my foot, but I'd also have a, a, 
healing fracture in my heel and two toes. So I was I was struggling a bit. Um, and then I said, I got back, okay. And then went um, before the World Cup, we went away. We played in, I think we played Turkey somewhere. Um, and I was doing some shooting after after um, practice because I'd been out injured for a while. And I just ripped my thigh muscle as well. But um, I said to Jack, I'm fifth. I'm, 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 I'll be there. Um, but we came to loggerheads. He said I wasn't fit. I said I was fit. Looking back on it now, I wasn't 100% fit to go into a World Cup after having so long out with the broken foot and then the, the thigh injury as well. But I wanted to play in a World Cup. Always is what you want to do. The pinnacle of your career is playing in a World Cup. Um, it must have been so frustrating for you. Did you manage to have a good laugh, though? Did the, did the lads... I spoke to Terry Butcher earlier in the week and he said, you're in a bubble, but God, you know, we didn't half have a drink after a game just because you needed it. Did, did the Irish lads noted, noted for their ability to, to enjoy themselves? I was, was it, I was apart that... from feeling miserable. Was it a good, good giggle? No, I, um, I was the lad at the party that couldn't drink, you know, yeah. never had a drink. I, I just, um, no, it was the most frustrating few weeks of my life ever. I wanted yeah. to be, I wanted to be involved. I, I, I wanted to play in the World Cup. I'm there. I'm not playing, and I probably was a nuisance to everybody and, and anybody. And then I just, I just wanted to let me, let me play. And then when he did get on against, um, was it Holland? I think the Dutch. Holland, I, think yeah. it was. Um, I heard from the bench that Jack had said straight away. I'd only run onto the pitch, and Jack went, "He's not fit." I told you, he's not fit. So I was never getting a game after that. I didn't even get on the, the quarterfinals against Italy in Rome. I um, I didn't even make that. The only thing okay. I made in Rome was the Pope. I went to see the Pope. Yeah, go on. That's right. Thank you for reminding me because I was I was looking through all the, your stuff last night, and there's a great, it's a fantastic picture. Jack's in the Jack's in there. The, the, the Pope's there, and there's you just sort of like. Just I was in just the, in the, the background, background. The background of the background, should we say? God, what, was that, what was all that like? When um, when we were playing in the to get to the quarterfinals, the penalty shootout against Romania, um, one of the lads said to to or Mick Bourne said to Jack, he said, "Jack, if we get back to Rome, if we if we can get back, will you get us to see the Pope?" And Jack sort of waved that and went, "Corsa will, Mick. Corsa will, Mick." But then we got to we got back to Rome. So Jack threw somebody. They um. We're able to to do an Irish team are coming in. We're going to go into the Vatican. Um, the Pope would have a there's, a there's thousands in this cathedral, and the Pope would be on uh, on the top, um, blessing everybody. And but this now started to go on for a long, long time, and it was roasting hot. People were getting tired. At one stage, honestly, Jack started snoring. He was so um, Andy Townsend tapped him and said, Jack, 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 you're snoring. So Jack sort of looked up. But as Jack looked up, the Pope was blessing someone and Jack thought he was waving at him. So Jack started <laughs> waving, waving back to the Pope in the cathedral. We were in there for about four hours. It was like, oh, it's so hot, so long. That was a funny part. That was probably the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, okay, we, well, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to say. I'll save it to the end. So uh, you're off to the World Cup, which is, which is absolutely fantastic with RTE. You're going to co-commentate. You, you did the World Cup final, I'm going to shout out, in 2018. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, World Cups as a player, maybe not as, as you wanted. But wow, that, that's, that's still something to say you commentated on a World Cup final. Yeah, I did the Euros as well. I did the England game, the England-Italy game. So uh, with RT over the last few years, yeah, I've been getting to World Cups, getting to Euros. I like it. I honestly do still get very, very nervous before before the game. Um, you are always worried that you're going to say something that's wrong or out of place. Um, and, I, and I get nervous that I'll get the, the player's name wrong. I'll be studying them for hours. and Schweinsteiger was the one they, they that was my favourite. With it's the, it's the only Scouse I speak. Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've been to some big games. But it's it's absolutely fantastic. I tell you what, you, you're entitled to be nervous. Um, and I notice, I mean, if you say anything wrong, pe people are just going to bat you on the social media and what have you. Do, do yeah. you uh, do do you fight back a bit, or do you have a go back if anybody has a go at you? I uh, I did once. 
Um, it was after uh, a, a game at Wembley in the Euros, and I I had a a, a beer. I read this thing in, on 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 Twitter. A, a, some man said, um, "Wouldn't it be great if you had a television where you could mute Ronnie Whelan?" So I, I'm I'm saying, "Okay, fair enough." So I go, "Cheeky get you know that what?" So I have a pint. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything. So I'm waiting for George Hamilton, the commentator, to come back. He was doing interviews. So I had another pint, and then I had another couple of pints. And I went, I'm going to have a go at him now. So I, put, I, I just put back, I said, wouldn't it be great if you could get a television that changed effing channels? <laughs> and I left it. I, I don't know why I did it, but then things started sparking up on my phone, and I, people were going, great tackle, Ronnie, you won there, and everything. Is this... <laughs> But I don't touch it. After after I do a commentary, I leave it off because I, I just can't get the whole people slaughtering you for doing a commentary. Um, do you get more nervous doing a commentary or playing? I was terribly nervous as a player. That's the one thing I don't miss. I, at times, did was sick before a game with nerves. Um, Kenny would be having a meeting and shouting and screaming. That's someone I'd be, I'd have to walk across in front of him going, hmm? <laughs> I was just so 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 nervous. I just wanted to be out on the pitch. Just get me out there. That's where I want to be. I, ne I never knew that. As soon as you got on the pitch, though, you were off. You go. Um, yes, until one stage where I did get sick on the pitch, and Glenn Hussein come running up to me. Ah, and it was all down the side of his leg. He done a side tackle, and he went, "Ah, you got sick on my pitch." On the... <laughs> so <clears throat> that was the only time that happened. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, you say your heart fancies or your heart would like Argentina. What does your head say? Um, I think uh, well, um, I don't really know to tell you the truth. Difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. It's even, even look down. I was looking through um, squads the other day while I'm getting ready for going over, and I look at Senegal and some of the players they have. I even look at Japan. Nearly all Japan's players are playing in Europe and not bad teams. And there's there's some hard, there's a lot of hard games in there yeah, for, for a lot of countries. I agree. Um, I'd like to see, I'd like, I'd like to, I'd, I'd, Belgium have got to win some, sometime. I know they're all they're getting a bit older as well, and they, the Bruyne and Tielemans and all these. And the, the, but it, they've been knocking on the door for so long. Um, whether, they're, whether they're just good enough to get through this, I don't know. Um, what, how's your schedule shape up? What Have you got uh, a list of games that you... You know, I'm doing the opening. I'm over there in the morning. I do the opening game. Qatar and Qatar and Ecuador. I've got my little list here. I, 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 I fancy doing that. They're not the greatest teams in the world, are they? Qatar. They only got there because they're the host nation. Never been before. So it's something to get your teeth into, isn't it? And yeah. How yeah. they will go. Good early touch. Yeah, it's 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 been nice to see. I don't obviously we don't think either of them are going to win the World Cup, but it'll be a, a nice opening game. I've got a few Fran French games, Belgium, Brazil a couple of times, Wales twice, England. Yes, yeah, so, so I've got a little mixture of it. Little everything is going on. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really really looking forward to it. Great. I hope the expenses are good at twelve pound a pint. Well, <laughs> you know me, I don't <laughs> drink, so I'm okay. <laughs> I just hope my missus is outside the door. <laughs> what was that? What was that guffawing I heard behind the door? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know people keep telling me it's twelve pound pint, but it may have to not matter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron, you know what? <laughs> All the best. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great one. We'll be we'll be we'll be somehow listening to you, but have have an absolutely fantastic trip. Look forward to hearing all about it when you get back. If you need me when I'm over there, get in touch with me. Brilliant, Ronnie. Thanks as always, mate. Take care.